Hello viewers, you are watching the Policy Times and I'm your host Akram and we are here with uh, Sri N. Gokula Krishnan sir who is a member of Parliament Rajya Sabha uh, from the Union Territory Puducherry. Yes. And uh, he is not a seasonal politician, he is an industrialist but has been honoured with the very uh, important task in the, the, that is permitted by the Constitution of India. Now, uh, we will actually try to understand. He, he, he is an, uh, a Rajya Sabha MP from Puducherry. Puducherry is the union territory, one of the seven union territories that India has. We will try to understand because a lot of our, a uh, lot of Indians in fact do not know what uh, union territory is and how they function. So we have an opportunity to, uh, you know, have some idea and insights about how union territories work and function. Sir, uh, thank you so much for giving uh, us the interview, sir. How do you actually define uh, and what is the governance structure of union territories in India? See, there are seven union territories are in India. Five union territories are coming under direct administration by Home Ministry. Other two union territories are, one is Puducherry and the another one is Delhi. I think Delhi is having 70 MLAs and Puducherry is having 30 MLAs. And 30 MLAs in the sense, we, we the Delhi and Puducherry are, uh, are having legislature, state, state legislature. Whereas, we are not getting central government uh, central government grant mm. the central government grant to be central government has to give grant to the union territories mm. but whereas all five union territories are getting enormous grant since the, that five union territories are directly controlled by, directly administered by Home Ministry, they are giving grant gracefully. Mm. And whereas those are run by state legislature, mm. those two union territories, one is Delhi and the another one is uh, Pondicherry, no, sir, Puducherry. These two union territories are having state legislature mm. and they, they couldn't get, the, these two union territories couldn't be able to get uh, whatever the grant we need which is not available. Earlier, in, from 19, 1990 onwards, if you check, it was, the grant has been given by the central government, 90% 90% grant mm. and 10% is a state revenue. Right. Now slowly it has been reduced and now it is around even 5%, 10% also they are not giving grant. Mm -hmm. This is the situation. situation. So now, actually, what is the relevance of having union territories even today, after 70 years of independence? Can they be converted into full-fledged states? No. So two full categories are there. One is political, hmm. political background. And another one is those union territories which are not having, which are not bringing resources coming under central government. Mm. The central government is keeping all union territories under their direct control, under their, right. under their supervision of mm -hmm. uh, uh, union government. Right. But now, two union territories we have mm. that, is, that has, that have state legislature. Right. That is, one is uh, Puducherry and another one is Delhi. Delhi. Okay. These two union territories mm. are not getting sufficient fund. Maybe Delhi 
is having enormous fund mm. they don't bother about uh, the government grant central government central grant. central government grant grant but, but they also have been crying for funds so, yeah. I, I i i don't know much about the De delhi mm. uh, union territory but mm. i know much about uh, puducherry government mm. puducherry is facing lot of problem Funnel. they are running more than 10 years they are running they are uh, they are facing financial crunch mm -hmm. but they are allocating only they are giving only 1600 crores grant mm -hmm. which is not at all enough to run the government right i got the message mm -hmm. now sir uh, there has been many such union territories like mizoram goa they have oh. been converted into full fledged states am i correct to yeah, say you that are correct. You are correct. right mizoram manipur meghalaya nagaland and other seven uh, out of seven hill states mm. all hill states have become full fledged ones full fledged state now this two have legislative assemblies puducherry and delhi puducherry. is there any chance they can also be converted in future we are trying okay we are trying. we are trying to get the statehood but government is not pleading government is not giving that facility okay to we we are crying for statehood mm. but still they are not adhering to our views mm -hmm. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages of being a union territory and a full-fledged state, sir? Advantage is if we are getting the statehood, mm. we will be coming under the ambit of finance commission. Okay. If we are having finance, if, uh, if we are coming under the ambit of finance commission. Whatever the facilities the state is having, that facilities will come. Right. Mm. Okay. Okay. Sir, now there are two states, uh, union territories, which have uh, Rajya Sabha members, yes. but all f other fives don't have uh, that. What is why is the Rajya Sabha? Rajya Sabha means all five union territories territories are not having state legislature. Right. That is why they are not having Rajya Sabha members. But they are having Lok Sabha members. Lok Sabha members. Mm. So basically, MLAs choose MLA, their Rajya Sabha MLAs MPs. Have to elect. MLAs have to elect yeah. Rajya Sabha members, which is not possible S for the mm. five union territories, which are not having any state legislature. Right. Mm. Since the other five union territories do not have uh, MLAs mm. or uh, state that legislatives, is, that that's is the main that, that, that is the main reason. Mm. So any other message with regards to union territories you have for our Please. viewers? Some union territories who are under directly administered by Home Ministry mm. are are getting full fledged grants, mm. full fledged grants. Whatever the uh, completely uh, the central government is observing, mm. whatever the, the grants they need, mm. that they are giving. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, Shri N. Gokula Krishnan, who is uh, an honorable Rajya Sabha member of parliament from Puducherry, one of the uh, seven union territories that we have in India. Now he, uh, from the interview, we clearly uh, could find out that uh, he has only one demand and one request and one proposal. That is, please increase our uh, grant like the you are giving to other five uh, union increase territories. Increase the grant and try to give the statehood facilities statehood absolutely oh, yes so what are the facilities a full fledged state gets so he expects and wants such facilities so uh, viewers we have seven union territories just to give the background in the end uh, chandigarh damanandio dadra and navel uh, nagar haveli puducherry andaman and nicobar island lakshadweep and new delhi now, out of all seven uh, union territories, there are two union territories which have le state legislatures. Yes, are having state legislatures. Right. So, uh, Puducherry has 30 MLAs, Delhi has 70 MLAs. And that's why these two states can also uh, elect their Rajya Sabha members. 
uh, the other since they don't have MLS, they can't have uh, Rajya Sabha members. Now, as the Honorable MP said, that he has two expectations uh, from the government. One, One please increase, increase the grant and give the full statehood. So, yes, since many states have, uh, many union territories have uh, later uh, converted into full-fledged states, there is a possibility that Delhi and Puducherry can be converted into full-fledged states. So, thank you so much. Keep watching the Policy Times. Thank you.